15, 2005, a tax day across the United States, and Americans all over the U.S. are getting ready to give up their Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights, their rights against unreasonable search and seizure, and their right against self-incrimination to file their income taxes, which are forced upon them by the government to fund uh, our massive federal budget. Hi, we're here in front of the James Farley Post Office in Manhattan, New York City, um, where um, hundreds and thousands of um, people getting ready to file their taxes and protesters, demonstrators, cavorters, and throngs of people are observing the mayhem happening in front of the post office. It's truly a chaotic scene, which is almost overwhelming. With us is the uh, uh, National Retail Sales Tax Organization, the Missile Dick Chicks, Billionaires for Bush, and the President of the United States himself, or at least a very good imitation of, of him. Hi, this is Nick Leobold of the Manhattan Libertarian Party, special correspondent for Hard Fire out of Brooklyn. We're here at the James Farley General Post Office in the center of New York City, Manhattan, to uh, interview um, protesters and tax filers getting ready to file taxes or protest the filing of taxes, um, uh, which is under, under the coercive tax system of the U.S. government. Uh, we're going to be interviewing um, the protesters tonight uh, of the Manhattan Libertarian Party. We have the Missile Dicks Chicks here. We have a, a caricature of President Bush, which looks pretty ridiculously accurate. And we have the uh, National Retail Sales Tax Organization and Billionaires for Bush. Um, so tonight you're going to hear many different viewpoints uh, uh, on the issue of, of the tax system. And uh, please stand by. Now let's go interview some of the protesters and some of the tax filers. Okay, what's your name? My name is Adam Yumtov. Of? Uh, Americans for Fair Taxation and the National Retail Sales Tax Alliance. I know, what exactly are those organizations about? We have a uh, mission statement of one, of one mission and one mission only, which is to make more fair and more simple our federal tax code. And what we've concluded after about $20, $25 million worth of uh, research where we looked at all alternatives, we concluded that a progressive federal sales tax that is revenue neutral would accomplish these goals of being the most simple, the most fair. Now, what exactly is a progressive sales tax? I've never heard of that. A progressive sales tax is one in which the more you spend, the more you pay. Also, okay. Also... Uh, we've taken into consideration of, of uh, the basic necessities of life, okay, food, clothing, shelter, and we are going to rebate the federal sales tax multiplied by the, um, by the, uh, by the uh, poverty level, multiply the poverty level by the federal sales tax and rebate that on a monthly basis. Now, I've heard the fair tax uh, has a lot of potential for abuse by Congress because they can introduce all sorts of um, additional things to tax or exemptions for people or special interests, so it might open up a, uh, a can of worms. Any tax system can be manipulated. But the great thing about what we're proposing is that we are going to eliminate personal and corporate income taxes, estate taxes, gift taxes, capital gains taxes, all of those areas, and replace it with one sales tax one progressive sales tax, but, uh, tax. And what would happen is you uh, make the analogy, if those taxes you no longer have, instead of having five or six doors to protect, you now only have one, it's a lot easier to protect that one door, meaning the sales tax. So if they were to tinker with it, at least it would be more transparent because it's only one place in which they can tinker with it. But a lot of people say that if you introduce a, uh, a sales tax, national sales tax, um, they'll still be able to come back and, and reintroduce the income tax again. Now, what we're going to do to ensure that that doesn't happen is abolish the 16th Amendment, repeal the 16th Amendment, and that is in separate legislation, so it can never come back. Okay, well, good luck with that. Uh, we, we certainly need tax reform, so I hope, I hope, I hope we get some tax relief uh, because um, the, the amount we're paying to the federal government is being wasted and it's totally outrageous. What, what we discuss is this is a collection issue. What you're talking about is a spending issue. Um, we could have a different conversation as to where the money is actually spent or wasted. But what we are talking about is improving the way in which our federal government taxes. Wouldn't you agree that our current system is, is not working? 
I would say both issues are outrageous um, from a libertarian standpoint. Um, so if you're if you're trying to improve the collection of taxes, I'm not sure most libertarians would support that. But um, we, we 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 support lower or elimination of taxes. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, hi. Who are you? I, I'm Jim Lisinski, the Libertarian candidate for public advocate. So you're a member of the Manhattan Libertarian Party? Yes, I am. I'm also the chair of the Libertarian Party in Manhattan. Why are you here tonight? I'm here tonight to protest our insanely high tax burden, uh, to tell the people of New York City and America that we don't have to take it anymore. We have to, to bring down this tax system. What's wrong with the tax system? I mean, don't we have to pay, uh, pay for government programs, which, which help everyone? No, they, they help no one. The, the government programs do far more harm than good, and they, they do double harm by taking the fruit of our labor that people could be put to better use by spending it themselves on things that they want to spend it on. You're saying that people actually own the money that they make? Yeah, yes, that's, it's a radical thought that, that we believe, unlike Bush who claims that it's your money and you should keep it, we really believe it's your money and you should keep it, all of it, not just the, the last half that the government says you can keep, but, but all if, of it. But if the government didn't collect taxes, it wouldn't be able to control the economy, and then the economy would, 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 would self-destruct, wouldn't it? Well, well, no. Unfortunately, the, the uh, or fortunately, the government doesn't control the economy. The government uh, imposes a burden on the economy. Uh, the private sector, the people who who create uh, wealth and build businesses and create jobs, are the ones that that, that run the economy. So actually, we, we actually um, actually it's it's private enterprise that that fuels the economy. Exactly. That's all there is to the economy. The government's just a, a drag on the economy. So you're actually saying that if pe if businesses and people had more money, the economy would grow? Uh, it, it's, a, it's a radical theory, but yes, that's what I am subscribing to. Or, or else it's just basic economics, right? Exactly. Thanks a lot. Sure. See you on Hardfire. Hi, I'm here with the Mitchum team, and we're interviewing some Mitchum men and women. Hold on. What do you think about the Mitchum line, and, and how is it affecting uh, the um, tax situation here? Well, it's definitely really affecting in a good way. I mean, um, actually, by people signing up next year, by 2006, you can get a new accountant. So it's definitely having a big impact. So you think there's a direct link to, to the tax issue with the, with the fragrance? Yeah, definitely. It's and, and we'll, uh, go ahead. What, what were you going to say? say? With the whole point of the campaign, the, kicking off the national ad campaign here, it's not the fragrance. It's about beat the sweat, take a break, use some Mitch. Uh, Mitchum's here to help out everybody. We got, we're giving away an accountant next year um, to win, so you don't have to be here next year. There's a prize, go, there's a raffle going on. We've got a lazy boy chair here so people online can take a break. They can come over here, get some magazines, refreshments, sit down, get some Mitchum deodorant and some calculators. So these guys are on hand here today to give out all this stuff and, and help out people who are here for the last minute, who've been here for hours. Okay, so it's an anti-stress uh, vehicle also. Um, let me ask this lady over here, um, what if, did you, do you, how does uh, these guys wearing Mitchum affect you? How do they affect me? I mean, did, I mean does, it, does the Mitchum drive you wild? The men smell, drives me wild. I'm putting it on now so I can smell like a man. Um, and, uh, okay, um, now what, now, now, what do you think about taxes? Do you, do you favor taxes or oppose taxes? I'm so against it. I just filed an extension because my tax consultant forgot to put my loss of business. And I had to owe tax even though I lost the business. Ridiculous. No, I, I'm hoping to win and get a new tax consultant. Are you here to file your taxes tonight? No, I'm here for the other demonstration. Oh, great. Which demonstration are you here for? Uh, uh, to um, oppose the uh, building of stadiums with public tax money. Great. I already sent in my taxes, unfortunately. Okay, hey, 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 why, why are you against the stadium being built? Because it's a big boondoggle. Uh, we need so many things in this city that should take priority over a sports stadium. Okay, I'm here with Billionaires for Bush. Uh, what exactly is your organization all about? Well, our organization is an organization of billionaires. We're the elite. We're President Bush's base. And we've come out of our boardrooms, our corporate back rooms, and we want to show our appreciation for George Bush. And on t today, tax day, tax day, you know, tax day is really one of the billionaires' favorite days because tax day warms our otherwise very frigid billionaire hearts. We come out here and thank the little people, the middle class and the working people, for paying our taxes. But I'm surprised you're happy with Bush because he, he really hasn't cut taxes that much overall. Well, he's cut taxes for the wealthy, for everyone else. No. He's cut taxes for everyone, at least a little. 
for the people who pay taxes, but he, he certainly hasn't done away with taxes altogether, which is what you want, isn't it? Oh, no, no, no. We're perfectly happy with everybody else paying our taxes. And we think Butch is going in that direction. And the more he goes in that direction, the better for the billionaires. So you want, that's why we love Bush. So you want him to raise taxes for the poor and, and lower taxes for the rich? Precisely. You have it. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Nick, Nick Leobold in front of the uh, James Farley Post Office with Billionaires for Bush. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir. When Athens accepted the Olympics and they had to build all these stadiums and stuff, and now they're in debt beyond imagination. And they, they can't fill up these stadiums. They're like white elephants. And this is, I think, obscene. $300 million in city money and $300 million in state money to build a stadium that the majority of New Yorkers do not want. Why do you think Bloomberg's pushing this so hard when so many New Yorkers are against it? Well, you'd have to ask him that question. Okay, um, what's your name? Hi, I'm Theron Burrow, a member of the Manhattan Libertarian Party. And why are you here tonight? Well, I'm here tonight to uh, protest the income tax, uh, which I basically object to. Why do you object to the income tax? Well, at the moment, the big reason to object to the income tax is that you cannot tell where the money is going. What money is stolen is not stolen. Uh, it's left over from being stolen from. doesn't seem to accomplish any of the general social goals. And in addition, now uh, it's being used to uh, do things internationally that a lot of us just don't like. Like what? Well, the war in Iraq. Um, I'm not satisfied with uh, prison conditions in general. Um, you know, you can interpret that as always oh, a leftist or something, but I just think if we're all going to chip in for something, you're supposed to do it right. But don't we all have to pay taxes to support all the, all the um, good programs that government runs? Well, I have uh, basically been in favor of uh, not having a government in the sense that we're used to it because it doesn't seem to work, but to avoid hardship to people on uh, public assistance, including my mom, for example, what we could do is to separate the coffer used to help old folks from the one used to bomb Iraq. I think that's a very simple, straightforward thing, and I think that in, in America, uh, to the extent that it has ever existed, a person should be able to say, no, this makes no sense, and I don't want to do it. Are you against uh, the other taxes, too, like the uh, state tax and the uh, property tax? When you look at them closely, you can tell that taxes have a way of knitting people together in competition, and the the reason that the, uh, the founding, uh, the framers of the Constitution came up with the idea of limited government was because they saw what happened when people start competing at one trough, and their idea was to have no trough. Unfortunately, they thought, uh, enough of them thought that white people could own black people, that this left an indelible stain on the entire situation. But the idea is that you don't have a, uh, a central coffer, you let those things happen naturally at the local level. And I think that the Europeans who came here and founded this country learned a lot of that from the Native Americans. Okay, thanks a lot. Not at all. Uh, keep rolling. Let's go over and interview Sam Sloan. Sam, can we interview you? Um, Gary, get Sandra, the baby, also. All right, now, all right, uh, what's your name? Oh, my name is Sam Sloan. And where are you from? I'm from Lynchburg, Virginia, of Lynchburg, Virginia. Oh, you came all the way up here from Virginia? No, I live here now. All right, so why are you in front of the post office right now? Because I'm trying to teach my daughter that she has to become indoctrinated into the system. This is Sandra here, and she has to learn that she has to pay her taxes for the rest of her life uh, to pay her debt to society. No, but seriously, uh, so you object to taxes? Well, of course, but, you know, we have to, we have to get the, you know, you've read 1984, we have to get the uh, children indoctrinated into, uh, into teaching them that the importance of uh, paying a debt to society to uh, you know, pay taxes all the time. Why do you object to taxes? Wait, wait, wait camera. Uh, um, what? Why do you object to taxes? Well, because, you know, I don't make enough money to live anyway, so, so what am I doing paying all this money to the government? Like sales taxes and, and, and utility taxes and all that? You're barely surviving supporting this baby and... Uh, and uh, so it makes it tough on you? Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, what do you think about the taxes? Do you think, do you think um, people should be able to keep more of their tax money or do you think taxes are too high? Well, actually, uh, in comparison to uh, other countries like Canada and, uh, and Western Europe, 
our taxes aren't that high. The problem is, what does our government do with these taxes? Do you think it wastes a lot of the tax money? They don't waste the money, they, they misspend the money. I mean, here we have uh, a health care crisis in, this, in the country. And uh, they're thinking of cutting back the, under the guise of reform, cutting back health care, cutting back Social Security. I wouldn't mind if my taxes went into programs that benefited people. But uh, you know that 50 percent of the federal budget goes into military spending. Hi, what's your name? Julius. And who are you? I'm a Swedish journalist student writing about libertarians. Oh, so you came to visit the Manhattan Libertarian Party? Yeah, I did. Oh, now, you're a libertarian. What do you think about taxes? Fuck them. But why exactly? I think they're unfair to the working people. Okay, to the working people or to, or to everyone? Everyone. Everyone? Everyone? Do they do, do they, but, but don't you have to pay for government programs? I mean, isn't the government important to fund? No. No? You think so? I don't think so, but I'm just asking an objective question. No, I don't think so. Okay, so um, you'd like to eliminate all taxes, right? Yes. Okay, um, and, you're, and what other libertarian issues do you care about? Prostitution. Make it free in Sweden. Make it legal. Is it it's illegal now in Sweden? It's illegal to buy, but not to sell. Okay, so uh, that's kind of a contradiction, isn't it? It's kind of a feminist policy. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. See you on Hardfire. Yeah. Um, by the way, Julius, um, how can the government function without taxes? Is there a need for a government? No, you tell me. No, I don't think so. Uh, he doesn't think there's a need for government. I, I don't think so either. I'm here with um, 2005 New York City Libertarian Party mayoral nominee Audrey Silk. Hi, Audrey. What, what are your feelings about the tax situation? Uh, hi. I think that um, the amount of taxes taken by the government, federal, state, and city, uh, exceeds any amount they could possibly need to uh, conduct the business that they were supposed to conduct for uh, the citizens, which was basically to protect us and uh, some infrastructure such as roads. And it should end there. Any tax, any other tax that comes out of our uh, paychecks shouldn't have anything more to do with it, what benefits everybody directly, not for entitlement programs and not for uh, welfare cases. Um, I, I do believe in a consumption tax. That way it's based on what you consume. It's fair across the board. And you pay as little as you like based on what you decide to buy. And I think that is the fairest way to go about this. So basically the government should be much smaller. Now you were a pioneer in New York City in, in protesting the, the harassment of smokers and anti-smoker um, legislation. And what about the cigarette tax? I mean, that was that was outrageous, wasn't it? Well, that's another part of the problem. We went from the very, going back in history, the very basic tax to taxing for entitlement programs. Now they're creating taxes to control behavior. These taxes on products because they don't think you should use it, so they want to price you out of it, is outrageous uh, nanny government through taxation. But wait a minute, isn't smoking bad for you? That's none of anybody's business. As long as the product is legal, then it's our choice. But I mean, why should cigarettes be legal? I mean, aren't they aren't they bad for people? Uh, who do you think benefits the most out of the tobacco industry? Government. They make money off of this. They'll never make it illegal, as much as they say it's uh, have all these programs and and uh, campaigns about anti-tobacco. But they won't make it illegal. And it, like any other product, if it's illegal, it's our decision. So, and also basically it's a matter of personal choice. I mean, people should have the right to live the, how they want without being harassed by, by um, excessive taxes. Exactly. Free choice. I mean, we've been warned. We know the risk. Now you have to stop having this paternalistic government and let the citizens decide for themselves. And how do you feel to be the um, New York City Libertarian candidate for mayor? Uh, I'm honored to represent a, a group of people that do believe in 
smaller and less intrusive government and uh, the right to be left alone. It's also tough, right, to deal with libertarians themselves. <laughs> I find them having a slight problem. Uh, there are too many uh, uh, ideas meshed in that don't appear to be quite uh, libertarian. Uh, really? A little less consistency in this party than I find in, uh, let's say, the conservative party. And I think that's a, uh, an obstacle we need to overcome. But I mean, it makes for very high drama and very strong feelings, doesn't it? Yeah, but when there's battles from within, you, you have a hard time uh, winning on the outside. Right. I also think that libertarians have to, have to come together and really uh, stand united. And they fight much too much in, inside the party. Um, so um, uh, we're looking forward to your campaign. Uh, thank you very much. I'll do the best job I can. I right, see you on Hardfire. All right. Uh, what, what about letting people keep more of their money uh, to spend the way they like? Wouldn't that benefit people in the long run by putting the, the people that, that earn the money, letting them keep more of what they earned? Repeat that, please. Uh, you said you, you, you like to see your tax dollars used to benefit people. Wouldn't letting them keep more of what they earn benefit people? Well, every, every government has to have taxes uh, for basic services, etc. And... This business of, you know, giving people, say, a $300 or a $500 tax rebate at the, end, at the end of the year, and then your state taxes go up and your Social Security taxes go up, that's a fraud. Hi, are you here to file your taxes tonight? Yes. Uh, do you wait every year to file your taxes at the last minute? In a way, it's done a while ago, a month, but now I'm going to just mail it. Okay, just wait until the last minute to mail it. It's right here on 34th Street. You know how it is. You postpone it. And sure. And do you think your taxes are too high or too low or just about right? Too high. <laughs> uh, what, what do you think taxes should be? What do you think would be a good rate to pay? Um, as low as possible. <laughs> already so much. Every two weeks we pay so much. You know, from our... Get rid of that. Yeah, as much as low as possible. Uh, how, how about your city taxes? Um, also low. <laughs> Should be paid low. I'm getting something back, though, this year. Good. Uh, do, you think, do, you think the, uh, do you think the government wastes a lot of money? Oh, God. You're putting me on spot now. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you very much. Hi. Hey, would you like to be interviewed? What's your channel? It's a public access in Brooklyn. Cable access show. That's 25. Uh, what's the channel that you're on in Brooklyn? 35. We're on every Monday night at 10:30. 10:30. Yeah. 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 You know, you know how many hundreds of millions of dollars are going into Iraq? And for what? They seem to be more interested in building up the Iraqi infrastructure than the U.S. infrastructure. Well, they're not building up the Iraqi infra infrastructure. Uh, people still don't have electricity there or, or clean water or uh, basic things. What they're building up is bases in Iraq, military bases, and... I think there was a report out uh, uh, just uh, yesterday in the New York Times that they cannot account for millions and millions of dollars that have been sent to Iraq. They don't even know where this money is. Are you here to file your taxes tonight? Yes. I'm... And uh, do you wait every year to the last minute or just this year? Every year I do that because every year I have to pay back. So I keep my money as long as I can until the last moment, then I give it to the IRS. And do you think uh, the tax rates are too high or too low or just about right? I think the tax rates are unfair because people in the, in the middle of income uh, bracket pay more than people in the upper income bracket, so it's unfair. Uh, what do you think would be a fair rate? Well, percentage-wise or what? Yeah, yeah, either way. What do you think you should be paying? The tax should be equitable. That, that everybody pay according to what they make. Shouldn't be able to have tax shelters if some guy makes a million dollars and pay less than I do. 
do you think, think you should be able to keep what you earn? Would you be able to spend your money better than the government does? Of course. <laughs> Why would the government spend my money? I have already paid more than $100,000 in Social Security. That's my money. Now the government tells me that by the time I'm ready to get Social Security, it might not be there. If I had the $100,000, I would have invested it differently, because I'm an analyst. I know how to invest. Do you think you'll get any of that money back? Don't think so. <laughs> uh, how about your city taxes? Do you think those are too high? Well, it is. New York City is, is one of the highest uh, tax rates in the country. New York City and state pay the highest taxes, and we don't get our money's worth. The roads are bad. The subways are bad. The whole city system is bad. We do not get our money's worth, but we, we pay taxes. No. Uh, who, are you thinking about the mayor election coming up? Who are you going to vote for? Not really. Look around you. Look here. Go to any big city. Go to London. Go to Montreal, Toronto, any big city. What do you see there on the sidewalk? This is New York. Uh, we pay taxes. Texas oil wells to Alaskan wildlife. If you don't like it, get in the protest pen. This land was made for me and me. And when I'm driving to do my shopping, I look right down on all the little people, cause I can do that. From my stretch home V, this road was made for me and me. And when I'm flying in my private Learjet, I never bother with the metal detectors. Those regulations do not apply to me. This guy was made, this road was made, this land was made only for me. What's your name? Julius. And who are you? I'm a Swedish journalist student writing about libertarians. Oh, so you came to visit the Manhattan Libertarian Party? Yeah, I did. Oh, uh, now you're a libertarian. What do you think about taxes? Fuck them. 